Hey everybody, Belover911 here. Um, I am back to answer some of your questions. I've gotten a bunch of questions from uh, KDeck95, one of my subscribers. Um, one of the things he asked me about, um, I decided to make a video for him, is uh, basically he was trying to make an airship, and um, when he enters the airship, he wants it to become his character, and he'll be able to move around with it, and when he exits, the airship uh, will stay where it is. So, um, I know this isn't an airship, uh, I just don't have a sprite on hand for it, because I just got uh, RPG Maker XP back on my computer after upgrading to Windows 7. Um, so this is basically how it's uh, going to be set up. This is the way that I found uh, to do it easily. Um, first of all, you're going to need your sprite, your character, and like I said, I know this isn't an airship, but um, you can pick whatever you want. I just picked this uh, little mining cart looking thing called the lorry. Anyway, um, this first one is going to be, uh, you're going to need to do set move route, and right here on the far right side, the uh, fifth one from the bottom uh, is called change graphic. That's going to allow you to change the picture of uh, whatever you have selected right here. You're going to need to change your characters to whatever picture you used, uh, your airship. The next one is going to be, um, this one is optional actually. Um, same thing, go to save move route, and I changed the movement speed to 5. Now, since it isn't a vehicle, it's going to be faster than walking, so I increased the speed, uh, and that's just temporary uh, while you're in the vehicle. The next one is going to be set event location. This is the most important one. Um, this is going to allow the event to follow you wherever you go. And I did use variables for this. So, uh, it's going to be on this event, which is going to control y uh, the event that's your airship, you're going to do a point with variables. You're going to use map x is going to be variable number one, and map y is variable number two. Um, that doesn't matter so much, except that it needs to correspond with uh, an event on your map. Where, uh, this is just, I just put it up in the corner, uh, there's no graphic or anything on it, but it needs to be on parallel process, and it needs to identify your variables. So you're going to need to go to, uh, where's that, it's on the first page, you go to control variables, and this is where, uh, what tells what variable is what, so variable 1 needs to be, um, let's go to it since I've already made it, your variable 1 is going to need to be set as the character's uh, map x. And basically what that says is that wherever your character is on the x-coordinate of the map, since there are all these squares, wherever he is, that's going to be uh, your variable 1. And same with uh, variable 2, which is going to be the player's uh, map y-coordinate. And so going back to our event, you can see that uh, map X uh, to control where the event is is going to be uh, the player's X, which is variable one, like we said, and map Y is variable two. So that's going to allow uh, the event to go wherever your player is. Then we're going to need to move to a brand new page. Uh, so control self switch on, and then create new page. And this is going to need to be a, uh, the condition is going to need to be self-switch A is on, obviously. Uh, and uh, that'll switch over to this page when all of these are done processing. And uh, basically all this is, it's going to need to be on parallel process, it's just a, a conditional branch. There's no graphic on this because you want the variable not to appear since your character is always or already going to be the uh, airship because of the graphic that we changed on the first page. 
So it starts off with conditional branch, and I use the A button for this. Uh, you can use whatever button you want, and in case you didn't know, when you play test your game, if you hit F1 on your keyboard, um, and go to the keyboard controls, you can select whatever uh, keys you want to represent what button. So, I just used the A button, which is Z on the keyboard. Um, on the condition, or not the condition, the, uh, what would you want to call that? Whatever you want to call this, um, what happens when A is being pressed. You do set move root and change the event back to graphic. Now keep in mind that it's only going to happen when A is pressed. That's why we don't have it as the uh, graphic right away. So until A is pressed, your character is going to be uh, the picture. Then uh, after you change the events picture to the airship, you're going to change your character's graphic back to whatever the character is. And uh, I'm just using the default right here, um, the default character. And I changed the speed back to the original speed of uh, walking speed. And make sure that you have those two coupled together, or else uh, the speed isn't going to change. And if you put the change speed um, in certain places on here, your character will not change back. So couple these together, and all you have to do with that is when you're in this move route, you just do two at a time. So let's say um, I wanted to add something else onto this. Let's say turn 90 degrees left. You just click that, and it'll add it onto the list. Okay, then um, you're going to do set event location and you're going to uh, put that as variable 1 and 2. And because that's only when A is being pressed, um, it's going to lock it in place. So when you hit A, this is going to trigger and the variable of wherever you are is where the event is going to stay. Then uh, what you're going to need to do is control switch A off and when you turn a self switch off on an event it will go back to the uh, previous page. So it will set it back to this and that um, that's how it works basically. Um, if you don't choose to change the speed all you have to do is take this out and um, take out the change speed here and all you have to do is uh, highlight it and hit the delete button on the keyboard so let me show this in action and you can see now that I have full control over it um, the event is tracking my character's location uh, but it is invisible there is no graphic on it and when I hit the A button my character um, my character is uh, out of the vehicle and uh, the vehicle is sitting right here I can hit the A button again and I get control over the vehicle and it's as simple as that. It gets locked in place wherever you uh, move to. And yeah, um, if you choose to make an overworld, which is like an overhead, uh, very large map of the world, like a world map sort of thing, um, all you have to do is um, right here you would need to go to uh, transfer player, put them on the map, and you would also have to make a new event, uh, a new one of these events on that page, because events don't uh, travel across maps. And that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, please ask me.
I'd like to thank KDEC95 once again for uh, being such a good subscriber and asking me questions and giving me ideas for videos. And I will see all of you later.